What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and this video is going to be part one of the Spec Ops 22 task list. For this instructional video I'm going to go through each task and show you how I completed it. So with that being said let's go ahead and start at task number one. This one's called Unholy Alliance and you have to defeat three demons and three vampires. It says they can be found in Mission 1 Opening Gambit, so let's go ahead and look for them there. Right away in Mission 1 you're going to find a threat with three vampires. So let's go ahead and take those on with Gorgon and Spider Woman. If you're wondering why I'm using those two together, it's because I'm trying to level them. But anyways, this first battle is going to be against three vampires exactly, so it's going to finish that half of the quest. Unfortunately, the criminal vampire is going to protect, so rather than getting a follow-up attack, we end up hitting him with Spider Woman. He's also going to get a turn from this, but after attacking my agent, he's going to get a big counter. You also may notice red and tooth procs for him, so it's kind of like he has the Kazuri. Still, I don't think these vampires should give you that much of a problem. Next, with Gorgon, I used his AoE Dance of Death, but it doesn't do enough damage to finish off the Protector. However, our Blade of the Guardian counter does drop our very first vampire. Next, we're going to easily finish off the Protector, and then we only have one more Thrall to contend with, for the Horde. After this final counter, that's going to be it for the vampires. Now, the demons are harder to get to, but they do show up later in the mission. In fact, we only needed three, but we end up getting a high threat that has five. So that's even more bang for our buck. This time around, since Gorgon is busy being deployed, I'll use Iron Patriot in his place. The only problem is I do hate those demons that absorb energy. So we're going to have to take him out with a melee attack. But first, let's go ahead and finish off this blaster in one hit. Then of course he's going to explode damaging everyone. Well, and healing the bottom demon. Next, it's going to be Pepsi Can's turn, and we'll just go ahead and use our Blade Punch on the middle target. Or I guess I should say Plasma Blade. Then with Spider Woman, I'll hit the bottom target with her level 2. After that, we're going to easily finish off the Healing Demon by using none other than the Warbringer Axe. That's certainly one way to deal with him. And following one more attack by the Bruiser, we're going to go ahead and hit him with our level 1 once again. That will be the end of our three demons, but we do have two more to take out in the second wave. Hopefully we can get some counterattack finishes, but if not, we can always use the 21 gun salute. That's certainly a great option because there's no energy healing demons in this wave. So the Subsinctus gets to go first, and she hits our agent with a playful sting. Then she gets counterattacked and finished. And next we'll use the Warbringer Axe, and that's going to be the end of this fight. Finally, the first task is finished, and we can move on to number 2. Also, we did get 100 experience for our trouble. In other words, that reward is pretty worthless. But hey, moving on to the Eternal Nocturne 2 of 26, we have to now complete two flight deck missions. These can be of any length of flight, and all you have to do is collect. So skipping forward slightly in time, we collect our flight deck, and then we complete mission 2. That's going to bring us to number 3, and hopefully you haven't already fought him. For this one, you have to defeat the mini-boss Grey Gargoyle. He's already waiting for us on the map, so let's go ahead and get to it. For this mini-boss fight, they're going to give you Spider-Man as a team-up, and then all you have to do is defeat him, and I believe two demons. This one shouldn't take you very long, especially if you have a decently leveled Spider-Man. As you can see, I have my Spidey in the black suit bruiser costume, so it's going to make this one even easier. The reason for this is because the Grey Gargoyle is going to be a scrapper. Also, I'm bringing in Gorgon for some experience, so that's going to help us as well. First up in this one is going to be the mini-boss himself, and of course my agent is going to protect. Then we're going to counter with the Mercurial, and unfortunately not the Blade. Then on his second attack, we're going to protect once again, and this time we are going to get a Blade of the Guardian counter. Just like that, the mini boss is at 50% HP. Next, I'm going to use our level 2 Dance of Death, and that's going to hit all the targets except for the Flyer. So now that demon's going to use a Sulfurous Belch, and they take a huge counter attack and it makes them blow up. This, of course, is going to damage everyone in play, but it's not going to be that bad for us. Next, with our Spidey, I'm going to use his level 1 web shot on the mini boss. It may have been better to go with our level 6, but I really didn't think too much about it. That is, until he got a massive heal from this demon. 
All this does though is makes my agent mad, so now we're going to use the axe, and just like that, we're going to knock out the Grey Gargoyle. Now all that's left to do is to go ahead and showcase Gorgon's level 9. Captain Insano shows no mercy. And that's going to be it for this mini boss fight. So now we've completed task number 3, and for that we're going to get 200 whole experience. Way more importantly, we get to move on to task number 4. So that one's going to be the Living Vampire. Defeat Morbius, the boss of Mission 1, Opening Gambit. And it just so happens that we have him on the map. Also for this one, you're going to be teamed up with Spidey. This one is going to be a slightly longer fight, because for one, there's three waves. And two, I kind of wanted to see some of Morbius' abilities. So I believe I do hesitate to kill him because of that. I also love the dialogue pretty much any time Spidey is involved, and Morbius' picture looks really good during this as well. It reminds me of Amazing Spider-Man number 101. That's one of my favorite comic books that I have in my collection. But anyways, as we get started, I'm using Gorgon once again, and this time we're facing off against a mini-boss as well as the end boss. For the very first action, it's going to be our agent. So let's go ahead and target the top demon with our big hitting Warbringer Axe. That's going to one shotter, and then next up is the bottom demon. For some reason he gives back the mini boss some health, which he didn't need. And then after he attacks, he's going to take two counters. Just like that he's down to a thousand HP, and right after he attacks Spidey will easily finish him off. I'm pretty sure a web shot ought to do it. So there goes Jack o Lantern. And now with two attacks in a row, we're going to start with the level 1 from Gorgon, followed by the Blade of the Guardian by our agent. This will help us build up buffs, and we don't need a huge hit, so we might as well use it. Then moving on to the second wave, it's going to be against two demons. So it should be relatively easy. First, the Flyer uses a Fireball, and he takes a Blade of the Guardian counter. This is going to cause him to explode, and then next up, I can use the Light Fantastic. I figured let's go ahead and get our health back and clear our debuffs. Then with Spidey, I'll use Spider Sense, followed by his level 6. This can do a ton of damage as you see, and it easily takes out the demon. All that's left is the living vampire Morbius himself. So what we're going to do is take it easy on him, and I'll start with the improbability field. Then finally, for the first time, I'm getting to see some of his attacks. First up is Mesmerize, and I absolutely love how he flies at you. He even does it for Fly By Night, which obviously makes sense, and that's a great animation. Next with Spider-Man, I'm going to use his level 1 web shot, and then take a look at Hunger. It says, slightly increases attack and accuracy, but slightly reduces defense and evasion. It also prevents well-fed, and can be applied 5 times. So that's pretty interesting, and by the way, we have to pass with Gorgon because of Morbius' Mesmerize. Next, with my agent, I'm going to finish it off with the Warbringer Axe. So that's going to be the end of Mission 1's boss Morbius, and also task number 4. For this one, we're going to get a reward of 1,000 silver, and then we also get to move on to task number 5. For step 5, you have to collect 20 unstable ISO weight, and you can do this by accepting gifts, or visiting your allies. I went ahead to my allies maps and that's where I got all 20 unstable ISO 8. So then after you get this, you'll get a blueprint for the Holy Flame Grenade of Antioch. This is going to bring you to your very first research of Spec Ops 22. So let's go ahead and check out task number 6, which is to create the Hallowed Flame Grenade in the lab. Simply click on the link and then we'll find out how much it costs. For this one it's going to be 8 hours, 40 unstable ISO weight, and 100 silver. And that's going to be where we leave off for the first part of the Spec Ops task list. Stay tuned for the next part which will come very soon. Then I want to thank you all for watching and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, good luck and take care.